हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू आर न्यू सेशन फॉर फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी मैट्रिक्स मेथड टुडे वी शेल सी हाउ टू सॉल्व ए ट्रस ए स्टेटिकली इनडिटर्मिनेट ट्रस यूजिंग फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी मैट्रिक्स मेथड सो एज यू कैन सी दिस इज वन ट्रस हैविंग अग्नि मेंबर्स वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सो देर आर फाइव मेंबर्स एंड वी हैव टू सॉल्व इट यूजिंग flexibility matrix method there is only one horizontal load given 60 kilo newton which is on the reach of the truss yang's modulus for all these members is 200 gigapascal there are some values in the bracket these are nothing but cross sectional areas of the members in millimeter square 500 mm square 300 mm square 400 mm square 300 and 500 mm square height of the truss is 4 meter and this total span is divided in two different parts with three uh, supports ab is 3 meter bc is also 3 meter so our first step will be to find out what is the indeterminacy of the truss so what is static indeterminacy of a truss how to find a simple formula m plus r minus 2g okay So m plus r minus two g. How many members? Five. These two, these two, and this one. So five. Unknown reactions. This is hinge. So two reactions. Another hinge. Two more reactions. So total four. And one is for roller support. So four plus one is five. So five plus five minus number of joints. A, B, C, D. Four joints. So what is static indeterminacy? Ten minus eight, two. Ten minus eight, two. <clears throat> so we have a better option of going for external redundancy. What is external redundancy? Whatever the support reactions are there, you assume any two support reactions as zero. Make the given truss statically determinate, but while selecting the reactions you have to take one precaution that you have to select reactions in such a way that given truss will be stable it will not collapse because if you are making any of the reactions zero it means uh, you are removing the supports so it should not happen that by after removing the supports truss gets collapsed this should not happen so we need to keep intact supports a and c and we will go for assuming these two reactions zero <clears throat> so that truss will be stable on end supports okay so what we will do is now we will make these two reactions zero or we will remove this uh, support and then we will find out forces in the members because of external loading let us do it <coughs> so now i have removed the support <coughs> and now i will show these two reactions okay this is ra or va this is ha this is rc or we see anything <clears throat> so this is 6 meter we will first of all find these three reactions so summation of moment about and a is equal to 0 this is our first condition of equilibrium so minus rc into this is 6 please remember plus 60 into 4 it is equal to 0 So how much is RC? Sixteen to four upon six. So ten into four, forty. RC is forty kilonewton. I'll write here. Okay. Then summation F Y is equal to zero. So R A plus R C it is equal to zero. It means R A is minus forty kilonewton. so it is actually downward 
so I will reverse this direction third condition uh, second uh, yes third condition summation fx is equal to 0 so minus ha plus 60 it is equal to 0 so ha is 60 kilo newton so this is 60 so these three reactions are over now we will take one by one free body diagram of the joints and we will find forces in the members that will be our p analysis so let us start so i will rub this okay so let me take the calculator yes so we are ready with Kelsey also. So now I will take uh, I'll just write here P analysis. Okay. P analysis. We are carrying out P analysis. So uh, free body diagram of joint A. Joint A. So I will show here this member AD another member is this is B so AB on joint A we have this vertical reaction of 40 downward and this 60 towards left what is the inclination of this member this is 4 and this is 3 so tan inverse of 4 by 3 tan inverse of 4 by 3 so it is 53.13 so I will write here ok 53.13 next is I have to assume the direction of forces in these two members so I will just go with logic this is horizontal member member force on joint is towards left so I will assume this towards right ok then I have another force which is inclined um, another member which is inclined so direction of force in this member I will assume again away from the joint why because vertical component of this member or force will be balanced by this vertical force that is the logic if I don't understand or don't know how to apply this logic we just assume the direction of forces either towards the joint or away from the joint anything okay so for this pre body diagram we have two conditions of equilibrium summation fx is equal to zero so horizontal component of this force pad into cos of 53.13 it is equal to 0 so find out force in member AD how much 60 divided by cos of 53.13 how much is that 100 kilo Newton ok then force in member AB so summation fx is equal to 0 so minus 60 yes uh, there is one mistake we have taken only one force another force also should be taken and that is force in member AB so plus PAB it is equal to 0 this is going to give us equation number 1 summation fy summation fy it is equal to 0 so another equation is minus 40 plus force in member ad into sine of 53.13 okay it is equal to 0 so force in member ad is 40 divided by sine of 53.13 so it is 50 kilonewton force in member 
AD is 50 kN as per the calculations my answer of force in member AD is plus it means my assumed direction of force in AD member which is away from the joint is correct so it is tensile force so I'll, I will show all these forces later uh, so force in member AD 50 kN tensile substitute this value here and get what is force in member AB so let us find out force in member AB so 60 minus 50 cos of 53.13 so that is 30 kN ok I will write here force in member AB is 30 kN again as per the calculations my answer is positive it means assume direction is correct so this is also tensile force okay <clears throat> so I will show these two forces now here force AD uh, this is this is wrong okay please neglect this this is wrong force AD is 50 kN tensile show it here this is 50 force AB 30 kN again tensile ok now come to joint D I will drop this first of all here joint D so there are three members these two angles are 53.13 let us not forget and here is 60 kN external force so this is AD, AD is away from the joint, so this is uh, 50 kN, this is DB, this is DC, okay. So I don't know now uh, the direction, so let us assume, we shall assume this here, up towards the joint, this away from the joint, okay and again apply conditions of equilibrium summation fx is equal to 0 ok for this joint so 60 towards right then minus 50 cos of 53.13 and this force plus pdc into cos of 53.13 ok this is equal to 0 let us calculate so this is 60 okay 60 this one yeah correct so 50 cos 53.13 minus 60 divided by cos of 53.13 so this comes to be minus 50 force in member DC comes to be minus 50 it means as per the calculation it is minus means my assumed direction is wrong so my force in the member is 50 kN compressive towards the joint please remember then summation Fy is equal to 0 summation Fy is equal to 0 so these are three forces force in member db which is vertically upward so positive minus 50 sin 53.13 okay now this is compressive towards the joint so its vertical component will be upward do not take it downward please remember so plus 50 sin of 
53.13 this is equal to 0 so this is simple force in member db is 0 so two more we have got let us show them here so force in dc compressive 50 okay so this is 50 then this is 0 remaining is dc <coughs> so you can take free body diagram for joint b now okay joint b so show it here so for joint b we have this 30 kN force vertical force is 0 so here yeah, very simple summation fx is equal to 0 this is going to give us force in member bc as 30 ok I have assumed this towards right so this is straightforward no further explanation is required so this is 30 kN tensile ok so this is over P analysis is over P analysis is over this is let us come to next part of our analysis so we have to now carry out K1 analysis what is K1 analysis uh, this is uh, we have assumed our two reactions are the unknowns now we are uh, we are removing our external loading okay and we are assuming our first unknown as our horizontal reaction that horizontal reaction will be one value one kilonewton I assume it is applied towards right ok on joint B I have applied this horizontal unit load value and because of this unit load value now we have to find out again forces in the members of the truss so again we will find first of all reactions so this is simple summation fx is equal to 0 ok so this 1 kN is balanced by reaction of 1 kN on A towards left then summation fy so do we have any vertical force in this diagram no so there are no reactions 0 ok now come to member forces we will start with joint B or let us say joint A or joint C anything so for simplicity let us start with joint A free body diagram of joint A so I will draw it here ok so this is 1 kN towards left And this is 0 please remember this is 0 <coughs> so I will assume force scene member AB towards right this towards the joint and now I will apply conditions one by one summation fx is equal to 0 so this is going to give us uh, force k force in AD so minus K AD cos of 53.13 plus K AB minus 1 it is equal to 0 ok so there are two unknowns <coughs> so we need second condition summation FY is equal to 0 so this vertical reaction is 0 this vertical component minus K AD sine of 53.13 it is equal to 0 why these two will not come here this is 0 so only vertical component is there so there is nothing else so 0 so substitute K AD at 0 here so this value gets vanished so K AB is how much 1 kN and nature and side 
Why? Calculated answer is positive. I assumed it towards right. So assumption is correct. So this is one kilonewton tensile force. Then go for summation. Uh, sorry, free body diagram of joint B. Here also you will get tensile force of one kilonewton. Simple. Rest of the three values they will be zero. Why? I will explain once again. I will draw free body diagram for joint B here. So here you can see uh, B A or A B is one kilonewton tensile that I have shown here. I will assume this towards right, which is K B C. Okay. And this is B D. So if you apply summation of x is equal to zero, K B C is one kilonewton. Simple. Again tensile. What about summation of y? This is going to give us K B D zero. Simple. Fine. So this is zero. Then go to joint D free body diagram of joint D. So this is zero. So basically there is no force acting on this free body diagram. So these two will also be zero. All these three members will have zero forces. So let us show them here from K1 analysis. So this is one kilonewton tensile. Okay. This is another one kilonewton tensile. Then this is zero, zero, zero. Now we will go for K2 analysis. Okay. Now I will rub this out the theme. Please remember these two forces are tensile forces of 1 kilonewton. Remember uh, remaining 3 are 0. Or I will just note them here. 0 0 0 this is 1 kilonewton this is 1 kilonewton okay now we will use this diagram for k2 analysis what is k2 analysis k2 analysis is finding out member forces when our second unknown which is vertical reaction on joint B is applied and assumed as one value one kilonewton so I will assume here show here one kilonewton value now we will again find these reactions okay let us find these reactions so summation of movement about a is equal to zero so i will say this is rc this is r a so minus rc into six minus rc into six minus one into minus one into three it is equal to zero <coughs> okay so rc is how much three divided by minus six so it is minus 0.5 kilonewton. It means my assumed direction of RC is wrong. RC should be downward. So I will correct it here. Okay. Summation FY is equal to 0. It is going to give me RA minus RC. It is equal to 0. Obviously there is plus 1. So include that also now it is zero so r a is how much r a uh, minus one plus 0.5 so this is equal to minus 0 0.5 it means my r a direction is also wrong it is also downward okay so let us correct it so both are 0 0.5 downward 
okay now we will find out member forces so let us do it taking the joints one by one so joint a so point 0.5 is here h a will be zero because there is no horizontal force this reaction is zero okay so this is 0.5 kilo newton downward this angle is 53.13 so again assume the directions this is vertically downward so this should go upward so that vertical component of this force will be balanced so this is k ad this is i am assuming towards the joint k ab okay so summation fx is equal to 0 uh, rather we shall find summation fy we shall apply summation fy and find directly k ad so k ad sine of 53.13 minus 0.5 it is equal to 0 okay so k ad is how much let us see calculate we shall calculate it <clears throat> so 0 0.5 divided by sine of 53.13 so it comes to be 0 0.625 k ad is 0 0.625 kilo newton so calculation as per the calculation answer is plus so assume direction of AD is correct tan side. I shall show it here. Let us show it by red color. So 0 0.625. Okay. Then come to another member. K A B so summation F X is equal to zero. Summation F X is equal to zero. So minus K A B uh, plus zero point six two five cos of fifty three point one three. It is equal to zero. So K A B is how much? Point six two five into cos of 53.13 so it is 0 0.375 again my answer of KAB is plus as per the calculation it means assume direction is correct towards the joint compressive so let us show it by red color compressive 0 0.375 Now come to which joint? Let us go to joint B. I'll draw here. So joint B we have this one kilonewton force, then this zero point three seven five. Okay. So this is simple summation fx is equal to 0 this is going to give me this value of k b c summation fy it will give me this value of k b d simple correct i even need not do any calculation so let us write them down here k b d 1 kilo newton compressive Next, horizontal 0.375 kilo newton. Remaining will be same, 0 0.625. So I will not give any explanation for this. This is self-explanatory. Magnitude direction same as that of this, 0 0.625 kilo newton. So K2 analysis is also over.
uh, as you can see there is one big table with us we have tabulated all our results in this table first column is member so members are 5 a b b c c d a d and b d so these are five members their corresponding lengths i have converted them in centimeter so 300 300 500 500 400 area areas of each member are inside the bracket they are in mm square i have converted them in centimeter square 3 3 5 5 4 then p forces as you can see here p forces minus 50 here minus 50 here plus 30 then 0 p forces k forces k1 forces they are below uh, the red values if you can see 0 0 0 for last three members first two members one kilonewton tensile each then k2 analysis so minus 0 0.375 compressive minus 0 0.375 compressive 0 0.625 both are plus because they are tensile and then minus one because it is compressive now pkl upon ae before going for this calculation we need to convert this in kilonewton for centimeter square because load is in kilonewton length or area is in centimeter square so this will be 2 kilonewton per centimeter square okay so let us calculate p k1 l upon a e p is 30 k1 is 1 l is 300 so 30 into 1 into 300 divided by area 3 into e value 2 so this is 1500 whether this is plus or minus p k everything is plus l a e they are constant so 1500 okay then go to member b c again same p k l upon a into e so same 1500 next c d so p force is minus 50 into k is 0 so no question here again 0 third again 0 so this is simple one column is over go to next column p k 2 l upon a e what is p k 2 l upon e p is 30 k 2 is minus 0.375 so 30 into minus 0 0.375 into l is 300 upon a e 6 so minus 562.5 minus 562.5 next 30 into minus 0 0.375 into 300 upon 6 so same value minus 562.5 go to next 2 into l upon ae for say cd member it is minus 50 into 0 0.625 into 500 upon ae ae value is different here 5 into 10 and not 5 into 2 and not 3 into 2 it, so it is divided by 10 so value is minus 1562.5 next ad member same value minus 1562.5 let me check minus 50 into 0.65 into 500 upon 10 here yeah. then bd it is 0 because p itself is 0 okay then k square l upon e this is simple k square is 1 1 into 300 upon a e 3 into 2 6 so 300 by 6 is 50 here k square k1 square l so 1 square is 1 1 into 300 300 by 6 
सॉविन फिफ्टी नेक्स्ट जीरो ऑल थ्री एट जीरो सिंपल देन के टू स्क्वायर एल अपॉन ई सो देर विल बी ऑल वैल्यूज सो जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव स्क्वायर इंटू थ्री हंड्रेड अपॉन सिक्स सो इट इज सेवन ओके इट विल बी सेवन देन नेक्स्ट इज सेम सेवन नेक्स्ट जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स टू फाइव स्क्वेर इन टू सो दिस इज के टू स्क्वेर इन टू फाइव हंड्रेड अपॉन टेन सो इट इज नाइनटीन पॉइंट फाइव थ्री नेक्स्ट इट विल बी सेम नाइनटीन पॉइंट फाइव थ्री नेक्स्ट इज वन स्क्वेर सो वन इंटू फोर हंड्रेड अपॉन वॉट इज ए फोर इंटू टू एट सो इट इज फिफ्टी ओके देन के वन के टू एल अपॉन ए सो के वन के टू सो वन इंटू माइनस पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव सो दिस इज के वन के टू इन टू एल इज थ्री हंड्रेड ए इज सिक्स सो माइनस एटीन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव माइनस एटीन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव नेक्स्ट इज इज इट सेम के वन के टू इन टू एल अपॉन ए सो माइनस एटीन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव गो टू नेक्स्ट के वन के टू जीरो K1 K2 zero zero okay now we have to substitute all these values in our matrix equation so let us write first of all our matrix equation now we do not need these diagrams okay so let us first of all write our matrix equation r1 r2 which are our two unknown reactions this is equal to f11 f12 f21 f22 so inverse of this matrix into delta 1 delta 2 माइनस डेल्टा वन एल डेल्टा टू एल ओके सो व्हाट विल बी फोर्स वैल्यूज एफ वन वन एंड एफ वन टू सो इफ यू टेक एडिशन ऑफ ऑल दीज सो दिस विल बी हंड्रेड दिस विल बी योर एफ वन वन वैल्यू एफ टू टू इज हियर You take algebraic addition of all these seven plus seven fourteen fourteen plus fifty is sixty four. So sixty four plus two times nineteen point five three. Okay, so it is one zero three point six. This is our F two two value. Take this addition. So this is minus eighteen point seventy five two times. Correct. So this is minus thirty seven point five. This is F one two as well as F two one. Okay, so these are four values. P K one L upon A E will be our delta one L. So this is three thousand. Okay, delta one L. Take this addition. So it is minus five six two point five two times and. Minus one five six two point five two times, so it is minus four two five zero, minus four two five zero. This is our delta two L. Over substitute all these values here and solve it. So.
so f11 100 then minus 37.5 again here minus 37.5 here is 103.6 correct so inverse of this 2 by 2 matrix into 0 0 minus delta 1 l 3000 delta 2 l is it minus yes minus 4 to 5 0 okay now we will solve this 2 by 2 matrix okay <clears throat> so simple calculations further so inverse of this 2 by 2 first uh, so determinant is I will calculate directly 100 into 103.6 minus 37.5 square so it is 8953.75 okay next so 0 minus 3000 so minus 3000 uh, sorry before that or matrix elements we have to rearrange them so 103.6 then minus 37.5 minus 37.5 and 100 I think we have to make make these plus then this is minus 3000 and remaining is plus 4 to 5 0 yeah so R1 what will be R1? Let us find out. So 103.6 into minus 3000 plus 37.5 into 4250 divided by this determinant 8953.75. So this is equal to minus 16.91 kilo newton and then R2, R2 is see again 37.5 into minus 3000 plus 100 into 4250 totally divided by 8953.75. So this is equal to, let us calculate, it is equal to 34.9 kilo newton. So please remember our first unknown was horizontal reaction, <coughs> we have assumed it towards right, so which is wrong. So this should be towards left. Next R2 is calculated answer plus assume direction was upward that is correct. So now we have to come to our final forces in the members. Okay. Let us calculate using this equation P plus K1 R1 plus K2 R2. So how much is P for member AB? 30 plus K1 value 1 r1 value minus 16.91 so substitute as minus okay so k1 is 1 1 into minus 16.91 plus what is k2 minus 0 0.375 so minus 0 0.375 into r2 is 34.9 <coughs> So let us see again 30 plus k1 is 1 into r1 is minus 16.91 okay k2 is minus 0 0.375 into r2 is 34.9 so it is 0 
or you can say 2.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 so much small value next P is 30 K1 is 1 K2 is minus 0.375 so same 2.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 ok CD minus 50 plus K1 R1 0 plus K2 so plus 0 0.625 into 34.9 so it is minus 28.18 third value minus 28.18 it means it is compressive force in member CD then AD same minus 28.18 compressive BD P is 0 K is 0 but K2 is there so K2 into R2 minus 34.9 so these three are compressive forces remaining two are 0 ok so this is how we solve a truss using flexibility matrix method and this was really time consuming let me know your comments on this video if you have any difficulty you can write it in comments